afternoon and welcome to AIDA's Auto Talk. I'm your host, Rachel Soleimani. Before I introduce today's presenters, a few quick reminders as always. Everyone that is registered for today's program will receive a copy by the end of this week. If you have any questions, feel free to enter them into the lower right side of your interface under the Q&A bar. Now join me in welcoming Acura Columbus dealer, Principal John Connolly, and Automotive Marketing Manager at Podium, Thomas Clausen. I won't take up any more of your time, so guys, take it away. Thank you so much, Rachel. We're really happy to be here, and uh, I'm excited to be with John. Podium's been working with the AID for about a year now, and we're really happy to talk through how texting can impact a lot of areas of the dealer. We brought John on as a, sort of the first-hand witness, the dealer expert, and we want to build this up by looking back at mid-March when you know the full impact of the pandemic on businesses became pretty clear, and especially on dealers. John, I feel like unprecedented doesn't really even begin to cover what happened then and what's happened now. Can you dive into a bit of the initial impact and some key changes that you made to stay operational during this time? Uh, definitely, Thomas, and, and I'm very glad to be here. You know, I love Podium, so I could talk about it anytime. Mid-March uh, is obviously a time uh, none of us uh, will forget. I think every uh, business owner in the country earned a MBA based upon uh, everything that happened. I was super, super lucky because uh, I have an incredible team of people that uh, work with me, and uh, we were able to scramble. Uh, put everything into place and, and keep things rolling uh, right through. And, uh, you know, technology was a huge part of that. Definitely. That's a great way to discuss it. And I think that this, right, the staff is a huge portion. And then technology is really, really needed at this time to make the right moves. And I think the theme of this conversation, you know, we want to talk about one of the key issues at Hamburg is communication. Uh, you know, the the walk in, the walk up used to be kind of the prime example of the of the dealer customer. That's who we all wanted to to come. And now, there's so many ways people are going to be interested in in a vehicle before coming to the lot. And talking about how customers want to communicate and their preference at the time, and how that's changed is really interesting. So, I know you have a pretty strong point of view on this of the power of texting and and how messaging can kind of make or break a dealer, I'd love to hear, you know, for the audience, a bit of, of that opinion. Well, Tom, it was an immediate transformation in March. We had to find a way to allow our customers to communicate with us. Uh, we were able, to, as an essential business, to keep our doors open, but it was by appointment only. And uh, just getting our phones answered was really difficult. In fact, in March, we just had the phones forwarded to myself uh, and the two other uh, of the people that work with us. And so the three of us covered the phone. Oh, my for, goodness. <laughs> well, we just we had to. Uh, that there was no other choice because you know, our customers obviously had a thousand questions and, and uh, we had to try to do everything that we could. And so where the technology came in was, uh, on our website, we have uh, Podium, which is uh, texting. And through the texting mechanism, we were able to keep in touch with everybody. Uh, I was able to be proactive and send texts out to our customers. So we were able to set appointments all through text. And with the car sales, we sold numerous cars totally through texting with the people never coming to our store. We were able to communicate everything. We were able to, to set up the home delivery. We were able to set up a test drive. If someone needed to pay a bill, we could send it through Podium for people to pay our, our, our bill. We were able to, you know, uh, send videos, you know, walk arounds on cars. Or if the car was in service, we could take a, you know, a video and, and you know, send it out and say, here, here's what we see. You know, those type of uh, technological advances were huge for us, and it helped us uh, be able to service our customers uh, in as seamless way as we could. That's fantastic. And I, I love what you said there. You could nearly sell a car the entire process over text. And I think a lot of times a dealer will feel bogged down. And I know there's a big drive to find the right digital retailing solution. But I think it's it, sometimes it's good to step back and say, a lot of this I can handle via text or over the phone. And then there's maybe a few steps I need to refine 
So I really like that example. Yeah, you know, March definitely seems like a long time ago, right? Uh, yes. And it wasn't that long ago. But it's amazing how many things have changed in the automotive landscape just over four or five months. It's amazing to me. But it's also super, super exciting. And with texting, I uh, am so happy that we're able to stay in touch with our customers. It's huge with, with, with this solution uh, because every single one of my service customers, when they finish with their repair order, they get a text right from me saying, hey, I hope you're happy, anything I can do. And I'm on, you know, probably on this phone call, I'll, I'll be multitasking, answering some podiums. And our, our whole team is signed up and they'll answer and, and hop in. So it really, you know, lets people know that we're there for them. I mean, so many times they're like, oh, wow, this is a real person. This isn't a computer. You know, the, the customers are so excited. So we have been able to generate the tons of reviews through that uh, process too. And then whenever we sell a car, it says, hey, Thank you so much for buying a car from us. You know, if you could review us, I'd appreciate it. If you need anything, I'd appreciate it. But it's just a real short text. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people, and we, we send uh, emoticons back and forth. And, you know, you know I usually That's get it just like a thumbs up. or You know, it, it's real easy, easy, easy communication that everyone, it's just not me, it's everyone at our store can be part of. And we can chat back and forth, write notes to each other. Uh, it's really made a huge difference in the way we operate our car dealership. That is perfect insight, John. Thanks for sharing that. I, I love that human connection, I think, is what a lot of things are missing. And texting is, you know, I, I'm texting my best friends, my family members, much more than I'm calling them. And it's a, just a true way that people communicate now. I think that's, the, you know, this theme here of how texting has really modernized the way business happens locally. It's especially true for dealers and especially right now, just as John dove into, you know, you can go through almost the entire sales process on a phone and some background on, on Podium and how texting fits, fits into it, just for context is, you know, we work with over 5,000 dealers and when COVID-19 came and we saw this increase in messages, we thought this, we, there's some really good insights here we want to share. So we're going to dive into that today and John's going to be here as sort of expert and and per, in in person user for that story. So, um, the the roots of Podium are interesting because it, it is really based on local business. Um, our co founder and CEO, his father ran a tire shop in Canada, and had they had a serious reviews problem. Despite being a what really well run business, there were just a lot of people. You know, I didn't get help. This bad thing happened, and he felt he said, you know, hey, it doesn't represent how good my business is. So they made a simple solution of just sending a text review invite. And with that, they realized that a lot of people just wanted to text. Uh, that process of asking for a review was really successful and solved the problem, but it resulted in people understanding why they needed text messaging. And it teaches people a lot. I think uh, th these charts here show the interest in people wanting to text, and especially with businesses. Uh, nine out of 10, that's the preference, according to Business Insider and to Twilio. And this problem for local businesses is just being solved in dealers. We've seen, especially in the pandemic, dealers who are on the front edge of texting, who are, as John says, you know, working as a team to text, who are, you know, sending emojis, sending videos, walkthroughs of cars, scheduling the pickup or delivery. Uh, that convenience and that connection and that preference is, is the real winner. And we want to really focus on those insights. Now, it's good to step back and think about how, how messaging has really grown over the past few years. You know, if we think about print, phone, that kind of ran the world until internet and then the website, and now YouTube is a big player, social. And then this far right column, 2010s and beyond, messaging is one of the, the, key, the key components that a lot of times we, we're using so much in our personal life, but we're not thinking about its application to a dealer. And we, we you know, want to lean into that messaging ability to understand best practices for dealers. Now, one thing we always like to go through, you know, is, is focusing on traditional channels and then what channels people want. And again, leaning into messaging, leaning into the way that people communicate now is truly essential in that process. And looking at the entire customer journey, this is something that John touched on as well that we want to walk through is as people are looking at vehicles, deciding which one to buy, purchasing, fulfilling, coming for service, 
that whole process has these critical touch points that we really believe can be handled through text message. And John, as your team has gone through this process of leaning into messaging, are there specific touch points that have surprised you or been more effective than you thought? Well, you know, I think the common argument is that uh, people are uncomfortable with text, uh, that they wouldn't really want to be texted by a car dealership. And, and that's gone completely out the window. Our customers, when asked in the service department, would you like us to call you, email you, or text you, over 90%. Say, you'll text me. That's fantastic. And in the, the sales department, uh, texting is, is enormous. Uh, and so that's been, you know, a very pleasant occurrence that everybody is uh, on board with this. And just the, uh, the ease of communication was something that's been very cool is that, like, service customers send us videos you know, when they have a problem with their navigation screen or they have a noise in their car, they use the texting to say, hey, here is a, a video. Will you listen to this and let me know what we can do to get it repaired? So that's been a, a huge difference, too. Yeah, I think looking at both service and sales, we're going to dive into that data. Uh, it has really positive implications on both sides. Um, one thing that we want to highlight as well is just Dealers using a texting solution, and especially on their website, between April and May, from the data we can see uh, from Google My Business as well as some other channels we have, saw about a 2x lead increase. And now that's a dream for a dealer and a problem that, you know, I'm sure many of you have said, if we could just get double people asking about vehicles, we're going to be in a good spot. And that's what we saw. So how to best take advantage of that is what we want to lean into. Something exciting that we did was, you know, uh, we wanted to understand the impact texting had, so we worked with J.D. Power, and in particular, they've done some great work on focusing on when texting, what is the impact it has on both CSI and SSI, and uh, how sales and service can benefit from texting. So we want to uncover, look under the hood at some of this data, and, and dive into those insights. So this, this first slide, while there's quite a few things going on, it's the preferred method of contact year over year through various channels, phone call, email, being at the dealership for service, and text message. And the only data point with a positive and up to the right trend, and with growing, growing importance, next to only waiting, you know, waiting for the oil change to finish is, is texting, and that's almost doubled in the past five years. John talked about this, you know, when the service team is asking what, what preference they want to come in at, what uh, most people are saying is, yeah, well, if you could text me, that would be perfect. You know, the preference for text has gone up from 21 to 37 percent, and the phone. I, it's interesting to see the phone call on decline. Other points of data that we can look at in this include the net promoter score, um, how it affects the CSI, and general texting trends. Now, this diving in here shows the question that was asked to the surveyors was, how were you kept informed of your progress during your service work? And despite the fact that 38 percent of people said text was their preferred method of being contacted. Uh, for the general auto shopper, you know, we're looking right around 12%, the, the dark black line here. Now, this changes for different generations too, but the, you know, as a lot of people say, well, you know, some of my customers don't want to text. Well, the pre-boomer and the boomer line are both trending up and everything else is, is carrying the weight even higher. So this, this granularity really helped us have the confidence to say, dealers are beginning to do this more and they they should even be doing it double according to the preferences of, of those people, which we find, find really, really interesting and compelling. Now, this here, for me, is some of the most impactful data from the entire data set. And what we saw is this is really diving to the change in the CSI output based on how someone was contacted. Now, for a, a non-premium brand, we're looking at a CSI average of 862. If they're texted, but the minute, you know, you're calling the customer 26 less points. If they have to call you 146 less points, all the way down to 168 loss, you know, and that impact in 168 CSI points is, is obviously, as you all know, massive for the bottom line and the success of your service center and dealership. John, when you see these, I, these texting trends along with the CSI trends, are there any insights to you that, you know, stand out the most? Oh, this is a hundred percent spot on. Our, CSI has improved significantly 
uh, through the last 18 months that I've been using texting uh, in our service department, our, our scores have gone up because you know, a lot of it is it's easier to do status updates. You know, it's easier uh-huh. to communicate. It does make a big difference. And, and you know, people don't want a phone call. Uh, very few people answer the phone anymore, right? And then when you send an email, uh, a lot of times it goes to the, somebody's spam or they're like, I don't check that email very often. But texting, people are right on it. Yeah, they, they absolutely get open. I think the most recent stat I saw was 99% of texts get open. Only 1% one, 1 get deleted without getting opened, which uh, explains a lot. This is helpful for, for viewers. Um, here you can find your the brand you operate and check, look at the you know the CSI difference based on if they were updated via text message or without. And that column on the right is the positive impact. And seeing that be a positive and significant number for every dealer, we we found that to be a a great insight. But um, and we have the premium uh, version of this slide as well. If you have a, a a premium brand that's not on this list, feel free to email AIADA or myself, and we can can get that to you. Now, the impact on sales, which is um, just as important as running a great service center and improving CSI, is seeing the boost in SSI. This data, you know, really talks about the overall satisfaction people have at the dealer and is going to lean into a few things, including time spent at the dealership and the general sales experience. So, and one thing that we'd like to call out as well is this data pre predates the pandemic. So, any trend that we think is going to be more accelerated. Um, next year's data is going to be probably break a few of the charts because as you all have experienced, there's been a lot that has happened. So uh, the question here was, you know, were you contacted, did you contact the purchasing dealer prior to your visit? Yes, if by text message. And so prior to visiting the dealer, you know, we see Gen Z uh, at the very, very top of this with a new data set, but the the increase of contact via text message before coming is really marked and something that we like to focus on, including that all shoppers, not only our Gen Y and Gen Z, really leaning into, hey, I've got a few questions before I come. Can I just text and ask about, you know, what's the miles per gallon on this vehicle or what financing do you have available? This is happening all over. And, you know, we're seeing over over 52% with that, that impact. Now, here we have the similar slide that we showed before for CSI leaning into this change in SSI. Now, the jump between just receiving the text and then starting with a form or email, you know, 30 points, we find that pretty significant. And it says a lot about not, not only just what texting means, but offering a great customer experience. And that's something that John's team does really, really well is, is, is focusing on okay, they've got questions. Let me just answer the question. I don't need to dive into getting everything yet or scheduling the appointment. Let me focus on helping this customer with what they need right now and seeing the positive impact on on SSI and how the sales process is handled. I find this as the best indicator of that, which is time spent in the dealership. Those who were texted were the largest portion of each of these groups who were spending you know, less than two hours their entire dealer dealer process. They spent less time negotiating because they were confident on what they knew. And then even selecting the vehicle they wanted, the, the people texting are often deciding that at home via via text message. John, you talked about selling you know entire vehicles uh, through text. Was were sort of each of these components part of those conversations? Uh, did anyone just write in and say, I want this car at this price? Or how 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 did those conversations go? <laughs> Tom, you'd be pretty amazed. Uh, uh, people, uh, there, there's a big percentage who are very specific. You know, I want this model at this price, uh, like at this lease point for this many months, this many miles. I'm communicating with a few other dealerships. Uh, I want roof rails. I want wow. this and I want that. I mean, that, it's from the rip. And, you know, the way that we, we track it with our, our lead sources. And it's uh, one of our larger lead sources, where, whereas the people have never been on an auto trade or, or a cars.com or anything like that. Their lead source origination is just from our website being on our texting and just sending us and saying, this is exactly what I want. It, it, it's pretty amazing. And we also uh, 
you know, when we were able to do cars all the way through, it was just easy to, you know, say, you know, what time would you like us to do a, a home delivery uh, or a home test drive? And instead, appointments. Uh, appointments were always important in the car business, but now they're uh, incredibly important because we're trying to keep people safe, right? And, and so uh, setting appointments, it, we can get all the, the nonsense out of the way when we can communicate by text and set an appointment. And so that's why these times are showing that people are spending less time in dealership by texting. I believe that a thousand percent because we get all the rigmarole out of the way and we can just focus on what they want or what they need. Uh, and it makes it so much easier. Yeah. And I, I like that a lot. I didn't think about the, the power of the appointment right now to keep everyone safe. You, if you have most of the questions answered, it's like, Hey, we can get this done pretty quickly. We can find the last details right. and it happen. It's great. Right. Appointments, they're good for the customer and they're good for us. If we have an appointment with somebody, there's a darn good chance we're selling them a car. And uh, we want it to be quick and easy, too. You know, we're, we're consumers, too. I, I love anything that can be done that's quick and easy. Sign me up. Yes, I, I feel the same way. I, I love that. Here's the, the last main data point I want to highlight. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, you know, I love, we all love recurring revenue, people who come back and, and pay more. And so one of the best indicators for that we've seen is returning for service. And a lot of people are instituting loyalty programs and trying notifications and different things. Um, something that was fantastic is if you were texted and you communicated via text, the likelihood that that vehicle will come back for paid service was over 50% for every generation category. And much better if they're calling you trying to sell the vehicle, if suddenly, if in you, you instead you know, are keeping them up to date, you're working with them via text, we're seeing up to you know 65% in the boomer and 60 in the Gen X category who are willing to come for paid service. And to me, that is one of the best insights and quick ways a dealer can think about adding to their bottom line and increasing business is, let me communicate via text message clearly and simply uh, throughout the sales process. And now that's in my CRM, I can hand that to the service team and say, hey, send them the notification in six months that they need to come in and get that, this vehicle checked on. Um, sets the dealer up for a great, great business of not only more sales and a better experience for that customer, but then them coming back and returning for service. We talked a lot about these customer needs and the business needs, and there's so many things everyone can lean into um, to improve and be better. And really what we're trying to do, what John's doing well, is just bridging that gap, leaning into okay, how can I, you know, I want to boost my CSI and SSI. I want to text. Let me bridge as many gaps as I can through messaging to make it happen. With that data, there's, you know, a lot more that we're excited to lean into in the coming months and, and figure out, you know, which of these changes are permanent? What should we expect and anticipate in future from buyers? And, you know, what new capabilities are our dealers really looking for and really asking for? And our team is working actively to answer those questions. And, communicating with groups like the AIADA and John and his dealership and um, all of you help us understand that. So if you have any feedback, ideas, questions about, you know, what's going to come next, features that really matter to your business, please let us know. And, and thank you so much for tuning in. If there were any questions that came in, we'll be happy to answer those. Uh, the email will email you back. And really what we hope you all take away from this is that, you know, texting is, is a great way to lean into to boost SSI and CSI. If any of you would like that data, let us know. And yeah, John, anything you want to leave the, the association with? No, just thanks for having me. Uh, and I think it's a, a great product and I'm very excited for the future. Fantastic. Well, thank you, everyone. And we'll hand it back to Rachel. John and Thomas, thanks so much for speaking with us today. As a millennial myself, I can confirm that texting is my preferred way of communicating. I have two little babies at home, and a phone call is pretty much impossible, especially nowadays when, when they're home. Uh, so great presentation, uh, super helpful during these unprecedented, to say the least, times. Again, to those on the line, you'll be receiving a copy of this webinar by the end of this week. 
Join us back here on Tuesday, August 11th at 2 p.m. Eastern as Charlie Chesbro of Cox Automotive returns to give us another update on COVID-19's impact on U.S. auto sales. For more information about AIADA, visit AIADA.org or call 1-800-GO-AIADA. Thanks for joining us and have a great day, everyone.